The capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. So in TCP connection establishment is just not a three-way handshake. It's not about sending SYN, SYNAC and ACK. It is way behind than that. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and today's video will be deep dive into the TCP three-way handshake and we will learn about what all key parameters that been exchanged during the process. How sequence number work is a key to understand the TCP. What are the flags that been exchanged? How each end exchange it receive window and how much expected data payload per segment during the flow is expected. And at the end of this video, we'll know about why TCP three-way handshake is the most critical part to understand. So we'll be starting our TCP three-way handshake journey from here, that is series three. So in today's lecture, it is TCP connection establishment. Imagine a person A wants to call person B. So person A dials person B and waits for the phone to ring. This is like TCP sending a SYN packet to the server, which to initiate the connection. Person B hears the phone ringing and answer it. This is like server sending a SYNAC packet, acknowledge and then request and synchronize the connection. So person A hear the phone being answered, says hello. So this is what a connection being established and then data being transferred. So TCP is a core protocol in the internet protocol suite. It is reliable and connection oriented and provides end-to-end -end communication between application running on different hosts over an IP network. TCP ensure that data transmitted between application is being received correctly in the same order in which it was sent. So during the establishment of TCP connection to endpoint exchange variables and the TCP, which is a connection oriented protocol that establish the connection first and both side allocate resource to maintain the connection and facilitate data transmission. In order to understand the life cycle of TCP connection between two endpoints, we can divide that in four parts of it. The first part is basically the connection establishment, wherein we will establish a connection and exchange the variable between each other. In phase two, once a TCP connection has been established between two endpoints, both end allocate resources are maintains the connection and facilitate data transmission. The send buffer in this case will keep all the data till it will receive an acknowledgement. In this case, when we receive an acknowledgement, the send buffer will be cleared. Now, when other side sends data, it will also maintain the send buffer in order to, if there is any packet loss will happen, then it will retransmit. So once an acknowledgement will be received, the send buffer will also clear from the other side as well. And then we will have what TCP termination, fin, finac, and then we will have what time wait. So what is time wait? So Whenever we have a connection termination, both end enters in a time wait state to ensure that any remaining packets on the network are processed before the connection will be closed. As a TCP termination using a fin flag is a orderly release, so there is no chance of losing any kind of data. So that's the reason whenever a fin been sent, it will wait for a time wait state to ensure that data is already been transferred, data is already been transmitted, and then it will close the connection. Today we'll deep dive into phase one. So what are the following variables which been exchanged between the two endpoints? The first one is initial sequence number. So the initial sequence number is what a randomly generated 32-bit value used to start the sequence number for a TCP connection. 
So the initial sequence number is generated. It is sent in a SYN packet as a part of three-way handshake to establish the connection. The receiving endpoint uses the initial sequence number to start its own sequence number for the connection. And the two endpoints continue to increment the sequence number as the data being sent back and forth. So the initial sequence number is a randomly generated 32-bit value used to start the sequence number for the TCP connection. The initial sequence number is used and referred the starting point of a sequence number of the first data segment sent in each direction. So in this, from the sender to the receiver side, we have a sequence number starting from 9846712576536 for this data segment and which it represent the first byte from the other end also we will have the first byte referred to be the sequence number as 5463728207846 of this data byte So the initial sequence number is important because it is helps to ensure the sequence number is used in the TCP connection are unique and unpredictable, which makes it more difficult for the attackers to forge or to hijack the connection. So the next one we'll discuss about SYN and ACK. TCP use a number of control flags to manage the communication between endpoints. So during the connection establishment, we will have SYN, which is synchronized. We will have ACK, which is acknowledgement flags are being used to establish and confirm the connection. The SYN flag is set by the initiating endpoint to request a connection and it synchronizes the sequence number for that direction of flow. And the ACK flag is set by the responding endpoint to confirm the connection has been established. If we discuss about the analogy for SYN segment is consider a writing a letter to someone while the SYNAC packet is like receiving a letter in response to the original letter indicating that the connection has been established and the communication has begun. So we can refer this as writing a letter as TCP SYN packet receiving a letter is an ACK been received and then again again replying back to the letter is TCP SYN from the other side to the sender. So SYN, SYNAC and ACK. So receiving a letter in response to a letter indicating that connection establishment and communication can be begun. The analogy to SYN segment is a writing a letter to someone while the SYN packet has been like receiving a letter in response to the original letter, indicating that the connection has been established and the communication has already been started. Window size. So window size is the amount of data that can transmit it before the receiver needs to send an acknowledgement. During the connection establishment, each endpoint advertise its initial window size to the other same as the other end. So this ensures that the sender does not overwhelm the receiver with too much of data too quickly. And in general, it advertises its receive window in this way, which is a TCP by which TCP do flow control. So the window size is 16 bits, which is 64 KB. But in the modern devices, phone servers, PCs, need much more memory available in their buffer. Back in 1980, RFC 793, the initial TCP design allocates 16 bits of window. And that is for a slow network. But as the memory is cheaper and the network is very fast, hence the situation is different. Therefore, if we need more than 64 buffer size, how could we allocate using this window space? To answer this question, 
we need to see the window scale option. So window scale is a technique used in the computer network to allow to efficient communication over a high speed network. The purpose of window scale is to enable large data transfer by adjusting the window size of TCP from 65535 to 1 GB. When a TCP sends data to the receiver, it sets a window size in the TCP header. The window size indicates how much data the sender is willing to send before for an ACK from a receiver, right? So back in history, when TCP was invented, based on RFC 793, TCP header size is only two bytes, which is 65535, but at that time, which was sufficient for the slow network. However, with the advent of high-speed network, the limit became a bottleneck. Window scale allow the size to increase beyond the limit using a scaling factor in the TCP option. If the scaling factor is two, that indicates how many times the window size can be increased. It enables efficient communication over high speed network by allowing large data transfer. Maximum segment size. So when we talk about the maximum segment size, it's the maximum amount of data that can be transmitted in a single TCP segment. So the data which is coming from an application layer and which will become a segment in TCP, we will attach a header to it. So the data portion that we are referring here is what the payload and the payload, what it means is the MSS. So during the connection establishment, each endpoint sends its MSS to another. This helps to ensure that data is transmitted efficiently by minimizing the number of segments that being transmitted. If the MSS is not exchanged between two endpoints, what will happen? The maximum segment size default will be 536 bytes. We can understand this MSS could be the maximum load capacity of a delivery truck. Just MSS specifies the maximum amount of data that it can be transmitted in a single TCP segment. The maximum load capacity of a delivery truck specify the maximum amount of data that can be transmitted in a single trip. So next is TCP options. The TCP, all, TCP also supports a number of optional parameters that can be exchanged during the connection establishment. This includes the selective acknowledgement, timestamp, window scaling, which already we discussed about the window scaling, which can help to improve the reliability and efficiency of the communication. And then we will have the RTT, which is a technique so during the TCP connection establishment, TCP calculates it improved round trip time. And that is more reliable for the congestion control. So next we'll discuss about the TCP three-way handshake. What all things happen, putting everything together and then we'll see that what all happens when a connection being established between two different endpoints. So active open from where the TCP SYN segment will be initiated. Passive where we'll receive it and then with response to that, we'll send our own SYN packet with an acknowledgement to the first one. So we send a SYN packet first with a sequence number of one. So this is a basically a relative sequence number, which is in order to understand, we can let's calculate based from as one. And then we'll have a window size which the sender is advertising that my receive window is 1600, but this is not the actual window. Because we have something called as window scale in the TCP option. So it will do a multiply by that window scale. And then we will have MSS, which is 1460, which is my receiving TCP segment payload. And then we will have a selective acknowledgement and timestamp. If you see a Wireshark capture, we will have a SYN flag, which is a SYN packet. You see that TCP segment length is what zero. 
So we are only sending a SYN packet in this. So we are starting with a sequence number of zero over here, which is a relative sequence number. And then when you see the window size in this capture from a sender to the receiver, the window size is 64240, right? But this is not the actual window size. The actual window size is what it is eight. So window scale eight means two to the power of eight multiplied by 64240. Okay, that will be our actual window size. The next is the maximum segment size, which we, uh, which the sender is advertising, which is 1460. We'll have a window scale of eight, two to the power of eight, which is 256. So total, whatever the window size is, it will be multiplied because this window size is not for this TC, modern TCP devices. And then we'll have something called a selective acknowledge. We are saying that we have the selective acknowledge, which is capable, and then we are sending that to the receiver. And then we will have a timestamp. The first packet, it starts with 0000, zero, zero, zero seconds. So once I receive a SYN from the sender to the receiver, the receiver now it will send its own SYN and acknowledge the previous packet. If you see the flags over here, the flags is what SYN and AC. We'll have a own sequence number. So it starts with 10, the relative sequence number, let's say, and this is what 0, 1, so two different flows. So this is from receiver to sender, this is from sender to receiver. Two different flows are there. So we have two different unique sequence number that we have in this example. And then we will have an acknowledgement number which is coming. Acknowledgement number is what? One plus one, which is two which is acknowledging the first TCP SYN packet. We exchange the window size is what 4000, let's say. But what it is, window scale three, two to the power of three is what eight. So 4000 into eight is the actual window size that the receiver is having, the receive window. And then we are advertising the MSS as 1400. So my payload, is 1400, payload size is what 1400 that I'm referring to. And then we'll have a selective acknowledgement and we have timestamp. So if you see this packet, we will have a two flags, SYN, SYN and AC, which is called a SYN AC sometimes. And then we'll have a window size, which is a receive window. And if you see the MSS 1412 in this example, we'll have a window scale of five, which is two to the power of five is 32. So this window scale value 32 will be multiplied with 29200, which is the actual window size that we'll have. And then we'll have the selective acknowledgement, which is capable in the receiver side as well. So if any of the sites are basically not capable, then this field will, this feature will not be in used. So then we'll have what the total round trip time is what is 0 0.268 milliseconds. And the acknowledgement number is what, based on the previous zero, it's plus one. So in our case, it, it was one. So one plus one is what two. So once we receive a SYN AC from a receiver to the sender, now the sender will also act the SYN packet, which is being sent from the receiver side. So it will send an AC with a sequence number of zero two. The AC is what now plus one, so 10 plus one, which is 11. And it will send the window size as well. So when we'll see a packet capture, we'll see that this is an acknowledge packet. And then we will have an acknowledge packet with a receive window. The, so now the receive window will be seen as what? 131072. 512 multiply of 256. So the now actual window, so TCP window size says that it is 512. And the calculated window is showing as 131072. So from where this calculated number comes from. So basically 512 multiplied by the window scaling factor, which is 256. And from where the 256 comes from? 256 comes from two to the power of eight. Window scaling factor eight, which is window scaling 
8, which is the scaling factor becomes 2 to the power of 8, which is 256. So 256 multiply of 5112 gives us 131072. This is the calculated window size. This is the actual window size we have. And one thing you'll see here in this packet when it's sending an acknowledgement, we don't have, we will not be able to see the TCP option field such as the MSS, the window scale, will not be able to see anything. Just remember, during the TCP SYN and SYNAC packet, we will be able to see the TCP option, we'll able to see the MSS value, we'll able to see the selective acknowledgement capability in that. But none of the packet now onwards will have this MSS and window scale information. So that is the main reason why TCP three-way handshake is more important in order to understand the window scaling concept and what are the MSS being exchanged. So this comes to an end for our series three lecture for TCP three-way handshake. So in this TCP three-way handshake, we'll discuss about the flags such as SYN and ACK, how the sequence number will start, what is the initial sequence number, and then how we can exchange our receive window with the help of window, window size, and how a window size will be increased based on the window scaling factor, and what is MSS in order to exchange between the two ends. Thank you so much. Please share your feedback and questions in the comment box. I'll get back to you. And if you like my videos, please do share. Thank you.